Uh, Mr. Pink. Shut up. <laughs> Is that how we communicate now? Shut up, shut up, shut up. I need to talk to you. Well, wouldn't it be better if I was actually there? Well, Tony, everything is better when you're here, but maybe... Not at maybe the not moment. This. Okay. Oh! Those words from me are yours now. Um, there's more, but that's... Uh, Danny? Okay, Danny, please speak to me. This the impossible the girl. girl. I saw that. Something's going on here. Hello? H hello, is, is someone there? I'm so sorry. Oh. Okay, um, what, what are you sorry about? Could you please just pass the phone back to... It's crossing the road. I, I found the phone. It must have just got thrown. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. And it is with great sadness that I must confirm them to be true. I have gathered you all here today to say that Mr. Pink, that Danny Pink, has oh. sadly passed away. Uh. <laughs> Wasn't terrible. Clara? It was boring. Boring. It was ordinary. Uh. Oh, wow. Oh, nothing, you know. Same old, same old. Uh. Well, you're only human. So the hair? You, You're only human. Oh my. Uh. Okay. A volcano! Huh. I'm sorry. I've never seen an active volcano. Do you know one? There's a sleep patch. Do you know what, Doctor? All of them? Are taking control. You really are out of your depth. No. I'm not getting done. Right, right. I will. I will do it. I don't like Clara. I don't think you will. Clara, my Clara. She just realized. Why are you just standing there? Do you understand what I have just understood? He can get in. Did you seriously think that that was going to work on me? Uh, <laughs> I allowed the whole scenario to play out just as you planned. So you can. I was curious about how far you would go. Oh, yeah. Go to hell. No, I think he means literally. Fair enough. You asked me what we're going to do. Okay. I told you. We're going to hell. Or wherever it is, people go when they die. If there is <laughs> anywhere. Whatever it is, we're gonna go there and we're gonna find Danny. Funny that he thinks the afterlife is hell. Interesting, rather. Almost every culture in the universe has some afterlife. Of an afterlife. I always meant to have a look around. So he'll be there. See if I could find one. You're going to help me. Well, why wouldn't I help you? Because what I just did, I just. You betrayed me. You betrayed my trust. You betrayed our friendship. You betrayed everything. I've ever stood for you let me down. Then why are you helping me? Do you think I care for you so little that betraying me would make a difference? <laughs> Cut out the whining while you're at it. Ooh. We've got work to do. This is it, Clara, one of those moments. What moment? The darkest day. The blackest hour. You and I. I think I'm about to meet Missy again, or they're about to meet Missy. Danny Pink might be in that place. We're in a hurry. We don't deserve a friend like you. Clara, I'm <laughs> terribly sorry, but I'm exactly what you deserve. <laughs> Ask, where is Danny Pink now? Where is he now? The promised land, right? Okay. Interesting symbol in the background there. Best to wait for the good coffee. Where am I? Yeah, yeah. That uh, <laughs> last thing that happened to you that really happened. That's life. Well, not life, I suppose. But... Uh, I like this guy. But I don't understand where I am. Watch. Go on. Whoa, whoa. Pace 
to die rich. Oh, it's the same symbol. The one from the wall. Oh God. We've been working hard to find a better life for the diseased. Is that Missy? At three W. Think so. After life means after care. We've come a long way. Oh. Hello. I hope you're well. How may I assist you with your death? Well, <laughs> there is uh, no immediate. Okay. Browsing. Yeah. Yeah, browsing. Really? Tongue tied there. Take all the time you need. Well, you know, it's just an unexpected. A kiss? <laughs> Welcome to the Three W Institute. <laughs> I need to speak to whoever's in charge. I am in charge. Well, oh yes, who's great in acting. You? I'm in charge of me. Is everything in order? Who maintains your heart? My heart is maintained by the doctor. Doctor who? <laughs> Did you feel more than one heartbeat though? That's my question. You can probably take your hand down now, Doctor. No, no, he might have felt... <laughs> that theme! Surely that's the theme. Was that not the theme? Holy shit! Any regrets? Bad memories? Oh, he's got is bad that, memories. Is that any of your business? Yes. It kind of is, I think, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, don't tell me he accidentally killed. But we've had a request to meet you. Any idea who that would be from? Oh, did he end up killing a child or someone innocent, really innocent? Oh, no. Oh, it was. So, I guess you remember. I'm still thinking about that theme. That was a master theme. Or they used to play that theme around the time the master was around. Especially engineered refraction index in the fluid so we can see the tank resident unimpeded by the support. Could it be? So each skeleton is inside something. I keep saying they should use this stuff in swimming pools. Why? Think about it. I am thinking about it. Why? <laughs> yeah. I swear, if that ends up being the master. He believed it was a telepathic communication from the dead. Why? Was he an idiot? He was able to isolate some of the voices, hear what they were saying. <laughs> so, an idiot then? Shut up, <laughs> Doctor. Let's cut on to that. Go cremate me! There is one simple. Me horrible possibility that has never occurred to anyone throughout human history. Oh. Don't say it. The dead remain conscious. Jeez. The dead are fully aware of everything that is happening to them. I mean, I tell you, that could be incredible if that does end up being the master. That could, have, that could be an incredible return. Skeptical and critical. Remember, be strong if it breaks your heart. The Inquisitive. Step, it should be okay. I feel like I'm missing something obvious. Ah, oh. J. Cyberman. Your welcome droid has developed a fault. That's not, That's not a, a droid. droid. That's my boss. Yeah. You know, I might have been guilty of just a teensy little for bed. The nervous fear. You know, it's ever so funny. The people that live inside that think they've got to. That's a matrix data slice. Mm. The hard drive. Time ah. technology. Imagine you could upload dying minds to that. There it is. Edit. So it is similar. Rearrange them. Get rid of all those boring emotions. Ready to be re-downloaded. How did you get a hold of time more technology? Who are you? You know who I am. Oh my god, it I is. Told you. you felt it. <sighs> Two hearts. Two beats. Surely you did. Time Lord. Oh God, that's insane. Didn't you realize where you were? Oh, 
Oh. Whatever it takes, I will be with you again, I swear. No, you won't. You're not coming here. Yeah, There's maybe. There's nothing in the world as soon as I know it's you. Just press this. <laughs> Great photography in this episode. A lot of fantastic, you memorable shots. The strategic weakness of the human race. The dead outnumber the living. <laughs> who are you? Oh, you know who You I know. Am. I know. Missy. Who's Missy? Please try to keep up. Short for mistress. Well, couldn't very well keep calling myself the master. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's fantastic. That's brilliant. I love it. Okay, episode 11. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've got to say that was quite the enjoyable uh, part one of a two-parter. Um, and it's, it's good to see the two-parters come back into it, come back into the fold. But also that being said, since it is a two-parter, you kind of have to go back to that mode of, okay, let me kind of hold off on passing judgment just yet, because it's essentially just half the story at this point, right? But of course, you could still explore quite a bit in this first episode. I mean, it feels like it is kind of leaning into that formula of the characters finding out just enough about the situation, right? I mean, of course, there's some big moments, big revelations. I'd say, you know, one of my really, really favorite moments <laughs> kind of came out of this episode, right? Exciting moment. I'll get into it, but... Um, you know, the characters kind of get themselves into a situation that's just impossible enough, right? Uh, to kind of end off on an effective cliffhanger. I've seen that time and time again in these two-parters. And also, you know, this episode kind of does continue that um, trend of the first part feeling more of like this really, or at least this one specifically, felt a bit more intimate, right? In its setting, in its... Uh, focus but then also you know by the end of it you see that yes part two is going to take on that grand approach uh, perhaps an action-packed approach uh, because of course you know <laughs> the Cybermen are out there now uh, it, yeah it's about to be a grand finale isn't it but yeah that's for later right part two the finale of series eight right now let's focus on this episode but first things first Missy Missy is the master the return of the master but at this point it's Missy Right, that's the character. Uh, yeah, I love that. As you saw, I just really, really enjoyed that. Um, now, of course, you know, I think I kind of had it figured out by the midpoint. And the thing is, they are giving you a lot of clues at this point, right? I don't think they're hoping that people are completely clueless right by the end of it and really get hit, really get blindsided by the big moment at the end. Listen, that being said, I'm sure plenty of people still didn't really know that it is Missy, or sorry, Missy, it is the master. But yeah, there's enough there to put it together uh, a bit earlier, uh, a bit before the actual official uh, reveal of it, right, in the end. I mean, listen, the moment I heard that theme, and it is a different arrangement of it, but there's enough there that us as the audience can pick up on it. I mean, I picked up on it. That's why I just legitimately had a jaw dropper moment, right? Jaw dropping moment because the moment that theme came on, again, a different arrangement, but enough there to clock it, it you know, it all just kind of clicks. The moment you clock that, everything else just kind of clicks into place because just earlier, they're also kind of confirming a, a potential theory I had that it was beginning to feel like this might be a Time Lord given their familiarity with our doctor. Right? Uh, I think I mentioned this in the discussion for maybe the last one or the one before the last one. It was, it was, yeah, maybe two episodes ago at this point that it's really starting to feel like this is a new Time Lord. So I was on the right track, but I did not think that it could be the master. I just kind of, I just kind of thought it's going to be a new Time Lord. Uh, maybe not new for the doctor, uh, but new for us, the audience. But that moment, that theme kicks in. <laughs> Man, I just, I just felt this jolt. I really felt this jolt, right? Uh, but they're, they're clever about it, right? It, it's a different arrangement. There's just enough there in it that you can, right? Again, if you pay attention to the score 
a lot. Uh, you know, I, I do adore the score of this show quite a bit. Murray Gold, uh, sensational, phenomenal. So a lot of these themes really get stuck in my head, right? Of course, they also lean into the cyberpunk, cyberpunk. I mean, there is a bit of a cyberpunk look for their take on the afterlife, the promised land, right? Uh, more on that later, but the the Cybermen theme also kicked in. I mean, the moment those doors close and you see the eyes and, and the theme kick in, I mean, I'm sure everyone knew at that point, okay, Cybermen. Hell, I think in that moment, they shouldn't have given us the theme, the Cybermen theme. I think the doors is enough. That, that would have been enough, I think. Because, you know, the, the shot itself really focuses on it as it closes, right? And it's the symbol. It's it's a symbol that I I did find quite intriguing, but I didn't I didn't link it to the Cyberman eye, the eye socket, and uh, of course it looks like a tear, doesn't it? That's always been the case. Um, and you know, there's a moment as Danny Pink is really quite emotional, really quite torn up about it all, and you know the tears. It kind of holds there, doesn't it? I mean, the tear looked really fake. I mean, it's not his actual tear, but it looked like a Cyberman, right? Or the eye socket of a Cyberman, right? That tear that kind of holds there. So yeah, I thought that was really quite noticeable as well. Um, but yeah, you know, I like it anytime they give the audience these kind of things to latch onto, Easter eggs, hints that anyone who's really kind of in tune with the things they're watching and listening to are going to pick up on these things. But yeah, going back to Missy, I'm a fan, big fan. Really, uh, really quite enjoyable, that character. Uh, and that actress, uh, Michelle Gomez, I saw in the comments, one of the comment sections for past episodes. Yes, big fan, big fan. I, I just love their portrayal of, or her portrayal of Missy. Um, really, really quite engaging. Uh, a lot of screen presence, a lot of um, great chemistry already even. I mean, Capaldi and Gomez already have quite a bit of chemistry on screen, don't they? I love it. I love it. But yeah, now everything just kind of clicks. Everything is kind of just adding up. It checks out, you know, the whole obsessive nature over the doctor, right? Uh, set up all the way back in episode one of this era of series eight. It, it all makes sense. But, but again, you know, there's a whole aspect of Missy being behind a lot of the things that happened here in terms of the Doctor and Clara getting together and the things that kind of played out since they met up. And again, they met up because of Missy, right? The lady in the shop who gave Clara that number. Uh, and, you know, she even called her my Clara a couple of episodes ago, right? I mean, I thought it was fantastic to see the doctor, Capaldi's doctor, in that state of shock, right? That uh, disbelief, that, that terrified look on his face is just so new, isn't it? Because you just don't see him in that state. But, you know, finding out that this is the master and now the master has control over an army, an immense army of Cybermen. So essentially, Missy's been at it uh, using Gallifreyan tech right? The something matrix, um, the data matrix or the matrix, data slice matrix, something along those lines, right? I think I have it a little bit jumbled up, but it was something along those lines. And yes, I guess I suppose I was on the right track for that as well. It, it did end up being similar to, uh, or a concept idea similar to River Song's final resting place, right? her mind being uploaded to that database. Similar concept. And, you know, like I said, I, I do feel like it is going to have a sci-fi take on it, a sci-fi explanation for it, rather than a spiritual one. Though that being said, I mean, their exploration of the afterlife is really quite chilling, isn't it? Some of the ideas and the subject matter that's being explored, whew, it's some dark stuff. I know people remind me all the time that you have to remember that it's a family show or it's for children as well. But my goodness, the subject matter in this one, it's bone chilling stuff. It, at times I did have chills. I mean, you see Dr. Chang is really trying to get them ready for this uh, because he understands the really um, terrifying 
uh, connotations of this, don't cremate me. My goodness, sometimes just the words can be the monster, the greatest monster of all. But the thing is, you know, their take on this afterlife is more so this idea of hell, eternal hell, eternal suffering. My goodness, my goodness, it's, yeah, it's, it's fascinating stuff, even if it is quite dark, right? Um, to see it kind of uh, covered on this show. Um, but you know, I've got to say, some of these side characters, people like Seb, really enjoyed that actor's performance. He's fantastic. He really is. But ultimately, yeah, it's not that type of afterlife, right? Again, sci-fi uh, explanation for it. Um, it's being brought on by design, right? Uh, you know, Missy being behind a lot of it, kind of collecting the dead, right? Uh, erasing the emotions of these dead souls and then copy and pasting them into Cybermen, right? I think I have that right. Also, there was this really interesting line of dialogue, right? Uh, in, inside of the TARDIS before they end up finding that location, he says something along the lines of, I've always wanted to look for one, right? Or meant to look for one, um, the afterlife, or to see if I can find one. Interesting, right? Given the fact that he keeps uh, initiating that conversation or that notion of this afterlife by linking it to hell, right? So this idea of him always looking for one or seeing if you could find one, you know, you can kind of add a bit more meaning to it, right? Uh, given years and years, centuries of self-loathing as well, right? Looking for that afterlife. But I kind of want to focus on Clara's trauma-induced delusion that kind of takes on, right? After losing Danny Pink. Um, listen, you know, that opening scene also kind of felt like a bit of a misdirect. Hell, I could even argue that it's a little bit disingenuous, really, because I feel like there is a distinct feeling at first, or at least for one, you know, half of it, of that, of that actually being some kind of plot, right, uh, that I'm going to find out about maybe in the second half or something. Uh, that's how it's presented. I really felt like, until I realized it's not, you know, because, because then it also became a bit more clear that, okay, you know, after the last episode, she told him, yes, I'll, I'll come clean. And he told her, no, not right now. Go home. You have marking to do and all that. So I suppose the sticky notes are for that. But the way it's presented, the score and the camera angles and some of the things it's focusing on, the impossible girl coming into play as well or coming into focus, I felt that it was a bit, I felt that it was a bit of a misdirect as well. Right. But ultimately, you know, she laid it all out. These are all the things that she's been hiding from it. There's just so much of it. Right. It's like a visual depiction of the things that she hasn't shared. Right. So on one end, it's a little bit effective as well, for sure, to see it kind of laid out in that manner. All the things that Danny Pink does not know about her. But then also it felt like, yeah, it was trying to be a little bit clever in its presentation. Right. Because there was this sense of desperation that maybe this is the final time she'll get to speak to Danny Pink, that she might not get another chance and that she's against the clock or something. Her delivery, something about that delivery just made it feel like that as well. But yeah, going back to the trauma-induced uh, delusion aspect of it, you see that she's in shock. She is just checked out. I mean, one of the standout moments, and I think you have to give uh, Jenna Coleman a lot of credit because there's some fantastic acting on display and she is carrying a lot of that because there's not much time allocated to that aspect of it, the loss of Danny Pink, because I suppose there's just so much other stuff to get to. But I think she kind of carries that and she sells it, right? She's in, sh she's in shock about it. You know, her grandma tells her or implores her to let it all out, you know, cry, let it go, let go of it. But again, like I said, she's just checked out. There's nothing there at the moment. She's not feeling anything. Um, she's quite detached from it all. But also I think there is a bit of, commentary there about her lifestyle, right? I think, she, I believe she called it boring. Uh, yes, of course, she wasn't, she wasn't quite all there. And, you know, later she did kind of snap out of it. And once she does snap out of it, oh, it hits her. It hits her. She could not believe her actions. She could not believe that she essentially extorts the doctor uh, and tries to force him into helping her, right? Even though she ultimately deep down knows yeah, it's impossible, right? That's the whole reason 
um, she has to take that approach. And the doctor tells her this much as well, right? Uh, the harsh truth of that situation. But quickly going back to finish my point about Clara telling grandma uh, that Danny Pink's death was boring. I, I felt like it was more of like a reminder or it served as a reminder, heartbreaking reminder about the psychological dangers of traveling with the doctor, you know, losing or potentially beginning to lose one's humanity. I think it was kind of on display here, right? That she was a little bit desensitized to it. Of course, it hits her like a, like a truck later once she kind of comes to out of that state, right? That she was in. Uh, again, she was in shock. Listen, I, I can totally see how this scene could really, really um, annoy a lot of people. I'm sure it, it annoyed a lot of people. Uh, Clara's actions. I mean, you know, the doctor makes it clear. Yeah, you betrayed me. You betrayed my trust, our friendship, all of that. And Clara understands once she's cognizant, she understands. Yeah, you know, so much so that she felt that he's actually telling her, go to hell, you know, get out of here. It's done. This is over. She accepted it. I think she said, fair enough. Fair enough, right? Uh, but of course, <laughs> in true doctor fashion, uh, go to hell means, yeah, let's literally try to go to hell. To hell and back again for our friends, for our loved ones. So yeah, on one end, she certainly takes it to the extreme. She almost outdoctors, or she does outdoctor the doctor. Like I said, extorts the doctor, right? Uh, she didn't know it was a dream state. You know, it was almost kind of like a lucid dream, essentially, and the doctor lets it play out, right? But ultimately, ultimately, I think you see that the doctor's unconditional devotion, perhaps the unconditional friendship, is on display. There's a stunning line of dialogue. One of the best of the Peter Capaldi era so far. Do you think I care for you so little that betraying me could make a difference? Right? Uh, my goodness, my goodness, that's beautiful. That is just uh, a fantastic line of dialogue. Um, impactful, so impactful. And, you know, I think once again at that moment, if you look at Jenna Coleman's acting, you know, that look of despair, just that, oof, that she's had a rough time of it even though it wasn't kind of depicted on screen. Again, you know, time issues, I suppose, um, because there's only so much you can allocate to that aspect of it. But I think her acting, uh, and of course you have to give a bit of uh, credit to the makeup department as well. You know, they really gave her that look um, that she's been out of it for, for some time now, days at this point. And I love that one uh, transition. I mean, it kind of threw me for a loop initially. I thought there was some timey-wimey stuff going on, but no, no, no. It was just her running to the scene of, his death and then you know it kind of transitions to just another mundane day in life it was just as simple as that he died and then he just moved on everything else just keeps moving um it, and you know that might have been one of the reasons she kind of felt that it was so boring his death right again she doesn't she wasn't all there at that moment you know i think a lot of it you have to kind of associate with her being in shock I, and I think it was it was good that they focus on that, to focus on those human emotions. But yeah, I just felt that she really sold that drained look. Um, and, you know, she was in shock the moment she realized the doctor is still open to helping her because she's a friend. She's a friend. And listen, I'm sure the doctor might have been hurt at that point that she, she looks at him in that manner or she thinks that she would have to extort him to get him to do something, to force him to do something, right? Take it to that extreme. Because at the end of the day, he was going to help her. Anyways, but let's kind of shift the focus to Danny Pink and his own struggles in the the, uh, the Matrix data slice, right? The, the afterlife, uh, the database, essentially. You see that his own you know, PTSD, his own trauma kind of comes to the fore. Demons from his own past kind of come back to haunt him, right? He's, he's kind of almost forced to face it. The young child that he ends up killing Right, and then yeah, it, it makes sense. It makes sense given how they've set up Danny Pink, especially early on, you know, he had that moment. As a one student asked him, right, have you killed anyone? And then, you know, that PTSD starts kicking in. That immense amount of guilt and regret that he felt about uh, killing that child, right? Uh, accidentally, of course, but still, right? He was out there, he was a part of this. He was a soldier and, you know, following orders, 
uh, put him in a situation like that. But you see that even though he is having this insane, bizarre, jarring experience, he's still, he's still making sure to protect Clara. He's trying to fail that test uh, on purpose, right? He does fail that test on purpose. Um, he knows he cannot let Clara <laughs> get to this place. He knows the connotations of that. Um, and he can tell by her tone that she is dead set on making that happen. Right? This really showcases just how far she's able to go or could go. So yeah, I thought that was, I thought it was, a, it was a good touch. It was a beautiful touch to still have Danny Pink look out for her in that manner. He fails that test. Uh, he tells her one more time, Clara, I love you. After she tells him, if she say that one more time, I'm turning this off, right? Because she's not open to that. Because he easily could have told her something, right? He could, he could have told her something that, that is really exclusive to them you know, intimate, some intimate moment that only those two could know about, but he doesn't. But also, yeah, he's in quite a rough moment, right? He's been through quite a bit. His mind's all over the place, but I do ultimately feel that he's making a choice to, you know, protect Clara in that moment. But I think that should do it for this one, folks. Uh, you know, lastly, I just wanted to mention Missy once again, again, one of the standouts of this episode. It'll be interesting to see if they kind of focus on any sort of backstory, even a quick one, right? I don't need actual footage. Maybe her just talking about it, right? Um, you know, the doctor asked, how did you get your hands on Gallifrey and Tech? Maybe, you know, they can go into a bit of that. Maybe they can explain how she ends up in this position, right? The last time I saw the master was in that finale, right? Um, in that goodbye episode for... Uh, David Tennant, uh, he just disappears after all the other Time Lords disappeared as well, right? After uh, they pulled that off. So yeah, it could be an interesting backstory, even if it is a quick one, um, to kind of catch us up, right? Uh, you know, I'm hoping there is a major focus on Missy in this uh, in the second part, in the finale. Uh, I really like that character. I do. I do. And then the actress playing that character makes it so much better. I mean, it is because of the actress playing that character that I'm so into that character at this point. But yeah, if you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments, give me your thoughts. If you're interested in timer-based full length or perhaps early access uh, to the next few episodes right now, consider checking out the Patreon page. Uh, and, you know, potentially supporting the channel if you like the content enough. Uh, if you're interested, the links are in the description and the pinned comment. Also links to social media, things like Twitter, Instagram, if that's your thing. But yeah, thank you for joining me, folks. Uh, and I do hope to see you again soon for the grand finale. Until then, take it easy.